Good morning. A group of nine leading scientists who advised President Barack Obama has warned that the U.S. has just three months to rebuild its stockpile of emergency medical equipment if it wants to be prepared for a second wave of coronavirus in the fall. In a seven-page report, whose lead author was the White House science advisor for both Obama terms, the experts fault the Trump administration for failing to replenish the strategic national stockpile in preparation for a pandemic just like the one we're living through now. The EU's coronavirus chief has also warned Europe to brace for a second wave, while another top U.S. scientist, the groundbreaking cancer and HIV researcher William Hasseltine, has said countries must work to contain the disease, not count on the possibility of a vaccine being developed, which is, not a slam dunk by any means. Black Americans are dying from coronavirus at three times the rate of white people, according to figures compiled by the nonpartisan APM Research Lab. In certain states the racial divide is even more stark, in Kansas, for instance, black people are dying at seven times the rate of whites. More than 20,000 African Americans have died from the disease, that's almost one in 2,000 of the entire black population in the U.S. As Lois Beckett writes, the government's pandemic response has been warped by racism, with the health secretary, Alex Azar, apparently blaming the disease's victims for their ill health. Nevada and Wisconsin are trying to make it easier for people to vote safely and by mail during the pandemic. So Donald Trump has falsely accused both states of facilitating election fraud and threatened illegally to withhold critical election funding. Trump voted by mail in Florida this year. Meanwhile, the U.S. Supreme Court has temporarily blocked the House from obtaining secret grand jury testimony from the Mueller investigation, potentially keeping previously undisclosed details of the Trump-Russia investigation out of Democrats' hands until after the November election. And Trump's former fixer Michael Cohen has been released to serve the rest of his prison sentence at home amid concerns over the spread of COVID-19 in prisons. William Coddington, a 32-year-old nurse who volunteered to treat COVID-19 patients on the front line of the pandemic in Florida, was recently found dead in his car close to the hospital where he worked in West Palm Beach. Coddington battled opioid addiction for years and possibly succumbed to an overdose. But his family said he was also struggling with the fear, trauma and isolation of the coronavirus crisis, and may have killed himself as a result. John Malkovich, nobody who knew me would consider me cold. John Malkovich has been in more than 90 movies, but he's still working as hard as ever, including in Space Force, the new Netflix comedy series. It could have something to with his having lost millions to the fraudster Bernie Madoff. Fortunately, he tells Simon Haddonstone, I always love working. Kim Kardashian's controversial face masks. The reality TV star is just the latest celebrity to capitalize on the coronavirus crisis, with a line of non-medical face masks to match various skin tones, which led to accusations of casual racism. The line between public health necessity and fashion statement is starting to blur, writes Morwina Ferrier. Many African countries saw the coronavirus coming and developed innovative strategies for testing, tracing and containment. But the rest of the world, accustomed to patronizing Africa, has all but ignored its successes, says Afua Hirsch. If you're fed up with the monotony of Zoom meetings, why not invite an alpaca to crash the party? Jessica Murray reports on the animal breeds you book to liven up your video conference call. First thing is delivered to thousands of inboxes every weekday. If you're not already signed up, subscribe now.